In this tutorial, I'll teach you the basics of working with the color picker in your digital art application. One of the tools that you'll be using the most is the color picker. The color picker can come in all sorts of shapes and configurations, but usually it features a hue ring that allows you to select a pure color, blue, yellow, red, magenta, green, and so on. In the center of the hue ring is a square, diamond, or perhaps a triangle that shows the value and saturation of the color. If you're seeing a different mode, you might look in the panel options for a way to change it. In the case of Krita, you have several different color panels to choose from. The one you want is the wide gamut color selector. In this type of color picker, value is often on the vertical axis and saturation is on the horizontal axis. Value controls the brightness of a color and saturation controls the intensity of a color. Put these components together and we have hue, saturation, and value, also known as HSV. Your art application might also offer HSB, HSL, or other types of color models you can choose from. You can learn more about these modes in a dedicated reference video. Some color pickers can be customized with sliders. Once enabled, you can control hue, saturation, and value more precisely. Now I can see the numeric value for each of the sliders, which will allow me to better gauge the changes I make to a color, as well as recall the same color again by repeating those values. Moving the sliders also affects the color picker, so if I move the hue slider, you can see the hue ring moving in response. I can also use the saturation slider to make the color more vibrant or more muted. The third slider controls the value, which can be used to make the color lighter or darker. You can preview the color you have selected in the color swatch and the color picker, or by painting it on the canvas. In order to select a color, you can follow my three-step process. First, think about the hue of the color you want. If I were going to paint a daytime sky, then I'd choose a color somewhere between indigo and cyan. Step two is to decide how light or dark I want the color to be. I'll choose a blue that's bright. For step three, I will decide how saturated to make the color. Is it going to be an overcast day and kind of muted, or is it going to be a bright sunny day and very vibrant? Let's say it's going to be a bright sunny day, so I will choose a saturated blue from the center of the color picker. To recap, I chose my hue first, I chose my value second, and I chose my saturation third. Step number two and three are interchangeable, so it doesn't really matter which property you choose first. In fact, you can choose both value and saturation at the same time. I'll fill my canvas with that blue color. I'll also show the entire canvas. Next, if I want to add a bright yellow sun in the sky, I'll select yellow for my hue, and then obviously we don't want a dark sun or a dull sun, so the color we choose needs to be bright and saturated. I'll choose a color for my sun, and then paint a circle with a round opaque brush. Once you have selected a color and applied it to the canvas, you might be able to select it again from a list of recent colors. Not all art applications support this feature though. A few digital art applications have grids you can apply to the color picker to make it easier to choose consistent colors or limit your color palette. For example, I can create color grids in Rebel and Krita. Krita even has an excellent color gamut masking palette, but I'll let you check that out in my reference video. And I can choose from a variety of color harmonies using Corel Painter. Though not as universal, there are some more unique shapes the color picker can take on depending on the application you are working in. There are circles and rectangular strips with various ways of representing the HSV properties. One of these might be useful to you, so feel free to check those out on your own. That covers the basics of selecting color in a digital art application. There's a lot more to learn about working with color in digital art, so be sure to check out more of my tutorials. Thanks for watching.